Tonight, modern technology in a pioneer museum? Find out more. Plus, students learn the Chinese language in China for free. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for March 26, 2012. I'm Christina Cook. And I'm Courtney Steele. Thank you for joining us this evening. Art may be fun to look at, but most of it just sits there and does nothing. Well, the new exhibit in Malone Gallery changes that. Bailey Majors gives us, gives us a look. The Malone Gallery of Fine Arts has opened a new exhibit displaying the artwork of Indiana native John Powers. Powers Showcase features three kinetic sculptures and one stationary piece. This show is part of a greater body of work that's dealing with motion and sound as elements. This idea that sound and movement are abstract elements that kind of open the work up for levels of interpretation by the viewer. Of the four pieces of art on display, one dominant work may catch the viewer's attention more than the others. The big piece is um, it's called Field of Reeds and there are all of these vertical elements that when they're put in motion it's reminiscent of a uh, field of grain. Powers said his interaction with students helped inspire the piece, but so did something else. It was sparked in a way by a trip to Japan, but as I started working on and designing the piece, I realized that really it was fed by my childhood growing up in the Midwest, um, growing up in a sort of rural area with all these fields of grain all around me. Powers' work will be on display for the remainder of March and into April. The artist said he hopes students will enjoy his work and also be inspired by it. My hope is that people spend time with the work, that they kind of start to see uh, it is a gateway to maybe another way of understanding, poses questions about this reality versus uh, what maybe is beyond this reality. Bailey Majors, Troy Trojan Vision News. Once again, Powers' work will be on display through April. Powers will be back on campus for a lecture in the gallery on April 5th. It's Alabama China, China Week this week, which will culminate in the dedication of the Confucius Institute here in Troy. The Institute helps spread Chinese culture here in the States, but right now there's a chance for a Troy University student to fully immerse themselves in Chinese culture in China thanks to a scholarship. A one-year full tuition scholarship to study in China is available for a student interested in Chinese language studies. However, a student must have some experience with the language already to apply. So one semester of Chinese or backgrounds in Chinese is that they have to know something about Chinese, Chinese, and they have to have some background or knowledge of the Chinese language. Anyone interested in the scholarship needs to contact Pacino in the Study Abroad program at 334-808-6128 or visit him in his office in Pace Hall, room 115. Well, Courtney, when you think about pioneer life, you usually don't think about modern technology. No, you're exactly right, Christina, but that has changed just a little bit at the Pioneer Museum of Alabama. Judson Garner explains how. The Pioneer Museum of Alabama has been a place that many go to to explore the past and see firsthand how modern society has developed. And now the people of the Pioneer Museum are being pioneers themselves, offering guests a way to explore the museum while using modern technology. It's our new program. It's a, a cell phone tour. You get to use your cell phone outside in the exterior buildings and it tells you a little bit about the museum. It describes each building as you go through. To start the cell phone tour off, you simply dial a number, then follow the path. Then each building has a specific number, and once you punch in that building's number, the guide on the phone will tell you a little bit more about that particular building. It actually helps um, explain who we are a little bit better. Before you would go out to the, to the exterior buildings, and you wouldn't really get to know much of the history of each one. But now this explains the, the history of each building and what it was about, and explains a little bit more of the daily structure of the building. And the assistant director explains how this tour will only help guests dive deeper into early American culture. We are a pioneer museum, so we are, are structured in the past. However, you can't always stay in the past. You always have to find a way to move forward without moving forward too much. So this helps us incorporate technology as well as um, keeping true to our own spirit. Judson Garner, Troy, Trojan Vision News. 
The Pioneer Museum is open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 9 to 5 p.m. For more information, you can go to their website at pioneer-museum.org. Now taking a look at news from around the state. In Gadsden, authorities are reviewing the death of an attorney found dead in his home in Etowa County. Deputy Coroner Michael Head says foul play is not suspected in the death of 51-year-old Clifford Callis Jr., but he says an investigation will be continuing into the man's death. In Opelika, coroner identifies a man killed in a hit and run as 32-year-old John Lewis Simmons of Phoenix City. The Lee County coroner says Simmons was a former serviceman stationed at Fort Benning in Georgia and was attending school at Columbus State University. In Montgomery, Alabama, Governor Robert Bentley has not yet kept the 2010 campaign promise to have the legislature address the rising costs and declining availability of homeowners insurance. Bentley's press secretary says the governor did not expect the process to take this long, but he realizes it's a complicated issue. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, the softball team faced their second straight ranked opponent this weekend. Find out how the Trojans fare when Daniel Percival joins us later with sports. But first, things heat up with a rally and town hall meeting scheduled in Sanford, Florida, where Trayvon Martin was shot and killed. We'll have that in the latest news concerning the story when we return. Officials in Sanford, Florida prepare for what could be the biggest rally yet in the Trayvon Martin case. I'm Randall Pinkston in Sanford. I'll have that story. Hands can do incredible things. Now they can even help save a life with hands-only CPR. If you see an adult suddenly collapse, just call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Learn more at handsonlycpr.org. If you can learn one thing in life, especially if you go into business, it's how to communicate and how to work with others. And I do think Troy taught me that. Troy reaches out to people who they see their commitment to public service. Troy just attracts students that want to give back to the community, that want to give back all across the world. We want to educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, the body to act. We want to enable our students to go out into this world and make a difference. Troy University. In class. Online. Within reach. Troy.edu. From the high definition digital production studios of Troy University. You're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world. We go to Christina Cook at the Global News Desk. Christina. Thanks, Courtney. A rally and town hall meeting are scheduled in Sanford, Florida, where Trayvon Martin was shot and killed a month ago today. The death of the unarmed teenager has sparked nationwide outrage. Ronald Pinkston reports from Sanford. The parents of Trayvon Martin gathered with supporters at a church outside Sanford, Florida to defend their son. They've killed my son and now they're trying to kill his reputation. The unarmed 17-year-old was gunned down last month in a suburban neighborhood. The shooter, neighborhood watch volunteer George Zimmerman, claims he fired in self-defense. Zimmerman has not been arrested or charged. Even in death, mm. they are still disrespecting my son. A Martin family lawyer admits Trayvon had been suspended from school after traces of marijuana were found in his book bag. But supporters say it doesn't matter. Whatever Trayvon Martin was suspended for had absolutely no bearing on what happened. It's been exactly one month since Martin was killed, a case that's caused outrage across the country. Thousands are expected at another rally today in Sanford. And members of Martin's family want to question political leaders about the incident at a special city commission meeting. A friend of Zimmerman says the incident was not racially motivated. There's a gap from the time that George got out of the vehicle and that the gun went off that we don't know what happened. A special prosecutor has been appointed to oversee the case. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, Sanford, Florida. The Supreme Court began three days of oral arguments on the constitutionality of the health care reform bill President Obama signed into act two years ago. A closely watched legal battle that could have a big impact on the health care system and the 2010 presidential candidate campaign.
Danielle Nottingham has the latest from the Supreme Court. The heated debate over President Obama's health care law reached the steps of the Supreme Court Monday. Hundreds protested outside as the nine justices began hearing three days of arguments over whether the law that affects millions of Americans is constitutional. Monday's session focused on whether these legal challenges must wait until 2014 when the entire law takes effect. If we agree with you about the correct interpretation of the statute, we need not decide the jurisdiction. There would be no reason to decide the jurisdiction. Don't you want to know the answer? <laughs> a ruling from the high court is expected in June, right in the middle of the presidential election battle. The decision could have a major impact on both President Obama and his GOP rivals who have pledged to repeal the law. Rick Santorum went to the Supreme Court and pledged to make it the central issue if he's the Republican nominee. This is the most important issue in this election. People lined up for days for a chance to hear the historic arguments. I truly believe this law tramples our Constitution. I think it's just really important to come out here and support this law that's already helped so many Americans. Court watchers expect the real fireworks to come Tuesday when the justices consider the law's so-called individual mandate. It requires uninsured Americans to buy health coverage by 2014 or pay a penalty. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, the Supreme Court. President Obama is in, a Seoul, is in Seoul, South Korea, where more than 50 heads of state are at a nuclear security summit. But it's his comments to Russia's president that are grabbing attention. Rita Nissan reports from London. An open microphone recorded a conversation between President Obama and outgoing Russian President Dmitry Medvedev. President Obama was overheard describing how he would deal with issues like missile defense after the November election. Both leaders apparently didn't know their conversation could be heard. The White House says the president's comments reflect political reality, adding that domestic issues are keeping the president from addressing long-standing problems with Russia. President Obama is in South Korea for a security summit. He was also very candid, admitting the United States has too many nuclear weapons. I say it as a father who wants my two young daughters to grow up in a world where everything they know and love can't be instantly wiped out. Obama stood firm on his call for Iran to give up its nuclear ambitions. He also warned North Korea to back down. Instead of the dignity you desire, you're more isolated. President Obama says the United States will hold back food aid if North Korea makes good on its promise to launch a long-range missile. Rita Nissan for CBS News. And that wraps things up from the Global News Desk. To see more stories from across the country and around the world, including how the National Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington can have an economic impact that sets records this year, you can tune into Trojan Vision Global News right here after the nightly news. Now, back to you, Courtney. Thanks, Christine. And now Danielle Percival joins us with a look at sports. So, Danielle, I know that softball team as well as a lot of other Trojan teams were at home this weekend. Well, that's right. Softball and a couple others were at home, some in action and some in practice. And I was there to catch all of it. And it seems like I spent the entire weekend outside, but it was well worth it. So let's get right into this Trojan sports. Okay. After defeating 21st-ranked Auburn on Wednesday, the Trojans faced another tough task this weekend. And yet again, they rose to the occasion. Undefeated no longer. That tag was the final out Saturday as the Trojans won 9-4 against previously undefeated 8th-ranked Louisiana Lafayette. The Raging Cajuns were up 4-1 in the top of the third, but Hayden Gann hit a solo shot to center field to cut the lead to two in the bottom of the inning. A four-run fifth gave the Trojans the lead, and they tacked on three more in the sixth. When you have your your uh, league-leading, undefeated Raging Cajuns come into town, number eight in the nation, um, and your kids pull off that performance with impeccable defense, dominating pitching, and then, of course, uh, 
excellent offensive production top to bottom. you got to focus on that. That was a tremendous accomplishment for our team. The Raging Cajuns got revenge in the second game, scoring nine in the first three innings, winning 9-1 to one in five innings. The dominating pitching from Ashley Rainey did not carry over as JCFL lost her fourth straight decision, allowing seven runs on six hits through two innings. We started out a little flat, pitching one, clicking on all cylinders, and then I think we pressed a little bit against uh, a very good pitcher. Because we spotted them so many runs and because they had a statement to make, we couldn't hold them, and so then we didn't have enough time to really make the adjustments we needed to make against their pitching. On Sunday, the Ragin' Cajuns came out on top with the final score again 9-1 to one in five innings. The only thing going for the Trojans was going going Gan as Hayden Gan knocked in her second home run of the weekend, putting the Trojans on the board. I think we did make a much better uh, adjustment of hitting Wallace. Uh, we just couldn't string the hits together. You know, even our home run was a solo shot. All in all, you know, with our team facing, having four games this week against top 25 teams and going two and two, those scores just now were not reflective of the type team we have. Um, it just uh, reflects a little bit onto how uh, talented Lafayette is. The Trojans will continue their season-long home stretch Wednesday night when they take on South Alabama at 5. Not only was softball in action, but Trojan baseball hit the road for their second conference series of the year. And for the defending Sunbelt Conference champs, conference play hasn't gone their way so far this season. Friday night, the Trojans lost 5-3 to, to Arkansas Little Rock and Tyler Ray suffered his second straight loss. On Saturday, the Trojans trailed by four but were able to overcome that deficit behind seven runs in a four-inning stretch and a powerful performance out of the bullpen. The Trojans won 8-7 to seven and the win was credited to Thomas Austin. Austin threw three and a third scoreless innings in relief of Jimmy Hodgkin and picked up his first win of the season. On Sunday, it was a guarantee a set of Trojans would win the series, and it was the UALR Trojans that were victorious by a score of 7-3. Troy was held hitless through six and two-thirds innings and was unable to overcome a five-run fourth inning by UALR. The Trojans return to action tomorrow night as they take on Jack State in Jacksonville. That game is scheduled for a 6-30 start. One of those teams that was in action on Troy's campus this past weekend was the Troy women's tennis team who knocked off the UAB Blazers 5-2 Sunday afternoon at the Lunsford Tennis Complex to pick up their fourth straight win. Troy picked up wins in five of six singles matches against the Blazers with Candela munez Giron picking up Troy's final win of the day, defeating Caroline Fault in a match that lasted almost four hours. The Trojans will return to the court on Wednesday, April 4th to continue conference play as Troy travels down to Mobile to take on the South Alabama Jaguars. The Trojan track and field team had another productive weekend, bringing home one first place finish and several top five finishes. Chris Upshaw placed first in the 400 meters with a time of 48.88 seconds. The men's 4x100 relay team brought home second place and Martin Pildovs placed second in the javelin throw with a distance of 70.97 meters. For the women, the 4x200 relay team placed third, while the 4x400 meter relay team brought home a fourth place finish. The track team continues the streak of Trojans in action against South Alabama as their next action will be in Mobile this weekend in the Jaguar Invitational. So the softball team was able to pick up their first or uh, the win on Saturday against uh, the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns, which gave them their first loss of the season. So they weren't able to win the series, but they were able to hand them their first defeat. So congratulations to them defeating two top 25 teams back to back. That's definitely an impressive feat for them. And hopefully the baseball team can pick up a win Tuesday night. Definitely. So we definitely want to win. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Danielle. Thanks, Danielle. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, Troy University students will be showing off their singing talents next week. We'll learn more about that in today's edition of Trojan Talk. Plus, after the rain, the sunny skies and warm weather has made its return. But just how warm are those temperatures be to get? Brief? We've had a gorgeous day today, and with the temperatures in our future, it looks like we may be able to officially say hello to spring. I'll have more coming up in weather. Hi, I'm Mia Hamm. As a professional soccer player and a future soccer mom, I know how fun and rewarding sports can be. I also know how frustrating it is when you're sidelined by an injury. So I've teamed up with the American Association of Orthodontists to ask young athletes to play it safe when playing sports. I spent years training to become a world-class athlete. I know what it takes to become an expert on the field. Orthodontists understand this too. They're experts in their field, helping kids and adults obtain healthy, beautiful smiles. They want to help athletes prevent injuries and stay in the game. It only takes a second to get hurt. 
and too many athletes are risking injury because they're not properly equipped during games and practices. Wear the right protective gear, like mouth guards, face masks, and helmets. Your first line of defense against preventable injuries. Play it safe, achieve your goals, and keep smiling. Visit braces.org. From the high-definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now Bray Sanders joins us with a look at weather. Well, Bree, last week we experienced some rainy weather, um, but over the weekend it seemed like it cleared away. What can we expect for the rest of the week? Well, you're right. We did have those rainy conditions last week, and the sun did come back, and it looks like that sun may be here to stay. I'll get more into that in just a moment, though. First, let's take a look at our campus snapshot. On campus, we see right now that it's a very beautiful day outside, the sun peeking right over Bibb Graves. So whether you're headed to class or headed home from work, you can definitely stop and enjoy the view. Take a look at our current conditions right now. We have sunny skies, temperatures at 81 degrees, dew points at 51 degrees, humidity is at 36%, barometers at 29.98 inches and falling. Winds are coming in from the north northwest from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Today's stats, we had a high today of 82, a low of 59. There was no rain today. The sun rises at 6.38 a.m. and it should set at 7.01 p.m. Looking at our temperatures around the state, overall the state is experiencing some upper 70, lower 80 degrees temperatures. Mobile coming in at 83, Huntsville at 78, Birmingham at 80, Hunt Montgomery at 82, Troy as well as Phoenix City at 81, and Dothan at 82. Looking at our temperatures across the southeast, in our area we're experiencing some lower 80 degree temperatures. And as we move throughout the rest of the southeast, those temperatures decrease just a little bit into about the mid-70s. Florida in the mid-80s as well as certain parts of Texas in the mid-80s just like we are. Looking at our temperatures as a whole throughout the United States here in the northeast, we see the temperatures are in the mid 30s and 40s, a lot cooler than what we're experiencing right here in our area. Looking at our current surface map, we see here we have this cold front coming in from the northeast. Looks like it could be heading to our area, maybe not. Taking a close look at our area, we have a few light winds here, but nothing too much going on. That cold front looks like it could miss us and leave us with those warm temperatures. Precipitation forecast over the next 48 hours. It doesn't look like we should be expecting any rain in our area. We do, however, have some rain north of us here in the Midwest, but it doesn't look like it should be touching down anytime soon. Tuesday, pretty clear as we head into Wednesday. That rain gets a little bit heavier here in the Tennessee area. Thursday, the north part of our state looks like they'll be experiencing about a 20% chance of rain. Very light rain, though. Shouldn't be touching us anytime soon. That rain misses us on Friday and hits certain parts of Mississippi and Texas. For tonight's forecast, we have generally clear skies, no rain, winds coming in from the north northeast at about three miles per hour, very light and variable with a low of 54 degrees tonight. So we'll have a very mild night tonight with light winds for tomorrow's forecast. We have mostly sunny skies, no rain, a very warm and windy day tomorrow. Winds coming in from the south southeast from five to 10 miles per hour with a high of 85. Very warm tomorrow, much like today. Looking at our campus, our class outlook for tomorrow. Around 7 a.m. it should be about 56 degrees and as we head throughout the day, it warms up. At 1 p.m. it gets to about 81, 3 p.m. it gets to about 83. So you can definitely go outside and enjoy the view tomorrow. Looking at our four day forecast for tomorrow, we have a high of 85 with a low of 56. As we head into Wednesday, we have the high of 85 again with a low of 57. Thursday, though, those highs stay right there in the mid 80s, that high getting to 84 with a low of 58. And Friday, we see that high of 84 degrees. So, Christina, last week we did see that rain coming into our area, and this week the sun did make its return. But it looks like throughout the rest of the week we shouldn't be expecting too much of any more rain. And like I said earlier, we can officially say hello to spring with those mid-80 degree temperatures. Well, that sounds just good to me, Bree. Uh, sunny weather is always good for everyone. Uh, we have a lot of activities going on this week on campus, so I know a lot of people will be enjoying that time on the quad. So that sounds perfect. Right. Okay, thanks, Bree. You're Bree. welcome.